Today I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks on how to MIG weld aluminum with a standard MIG whip and not a spool gun or a push-pull gun. Let's get started. So if you guys have ever tried to use a standard MIG whip to put aluminum wire in your machine, this is probably typical of the results you get. We had a really inconsistent wire speed feed, so you could kind of see we'd start out and do okay, and then the rollers would start slipping, the wires dragging inside the lip or inside the lead, and then we would get these really hot spots where there was no wire. Then the machine birds nested. So I'm going to show you a couple tricks, set up your machine, and get around using a spool gun or a push-pull gun. Tip number one, you see in this first weld, I had my lead kind of coiled up, kind of haphazardly. Tip number one is gonna be you want your lead as straight as possible. The aluminum wire is a lot softer than like your standard flux core or solid wire. So you need the lead to be as straight as possible. You can see I could barely run, I could barely even tack, maybe an inch of weld at most. We're gonna straighten the lead out, make another run. It'll be a little bit better, but it won't quite be right. So we'll try that again. You can see in that second weld that straightening out the lead helped out quite a bit. We were still having some wire feed inconsistencies. I've still got three more tips to help you guys get this thing dialed in. So number two, we're actually using 5356 wire and I've got some filler rod here. This is 4043, this is 5356. And the 4043 is a lot softer. You can see I can just barely put any pressure and bend this. The 5356, See, the whole rod is trying to deform. So it's a lot stiffer, lot stiffer filler. That's gonna be a key too if you're trying to use a standard whip. All right, tip number three is literally just the tip. So now we're running 045 wire, we're running an 052 tip. You wanna go one size up from your wire size. The reason for that is because the aluminum wire is so much softer, when it goes through the rollers, it'll tend to ovalize. And when that oval comes through a same size tip, It'll hang up and drag, and that's when you'll get wire feed issues, you'll bird's nest, you'll burn your tips up. So remember, with aluminum wire, you want to go one size above your wire size. Tip number four is going from your standard hard wire liner to a Teflon liner in your whip. So I'm going to show you guys how to replace this liner real quick. We'll combine all four tips, we'll make another run on our material, and you're going to see a lot better result this time. All right, our first step here. We're gonna back off this retaining nut for the liner. So we back it off. You can see there's a little ferrule underneath there. Go ahead and give that a little tug and just keep pulling. And that's your, your standard MIG liner. All right, so now we've got our standard, standard liner pulled out. Let's compare it to our new Teflon liner. You can see the standard, standard liner is kind of like a coiled spring. Um, and that's where the aluminum wire can really catch up on it and you can have uh, bird's nesting issues. With our Teflon liner, it's a nice smooth bore all the way through, and this will really help our wire feed issues. Now we've got our new Teflon liner pushed all the way into our torch, we're gonna have to trim it down a little bit. So you install this new collet, slide it down until it reaches the connection point for the torch, and I'll show you how to trim it. All right, now that you've slid your collet all the way down into this threaded portion, you wanna take a Sharpie, and mark just at the top of that little collet. Now we're going to pull it back out and I'll show you how to trim this liner down. Now that we've pulled our cut line out a little bit, you want to cut at least 1 16th to an eighth inch on the torch side of that line. So let's go ahead and cut this now. All right, so now we've got our collet right to the end of our Teflon liner. We're going to go ahead and push it back in, reinstall our retaining nut. Now that we've got our Teflon liner properly installed, let's hook this back up to the machine. We'll feed the wire back through the torch and we'll try running this aluminum MIG again. You can see I've got the exact same settings we were running before, but we've got our four tricks. We've got our lead as straight as possible. We're running 5356 wire with an oversized tip and we've got our Teflon liner. And you can see how much cleaner this is running now. This was our kind of our second run with the, uh, the bad setup where we had the lead straightened out. We made it about an inch and a half or two inches of weld. 
before we got a pretty gnarly bird's nest. Now, switching over to our Teflon liner, oversized tip, straighten out the lead. You can see we, we welded, what, six, seven inches, no problem. And in testing, we ran about another six foot of weld and haven't had a single issue. So you can see, with a couple little tricks, sometimes you can get away from using a spool gun or even using a push-pull gun with your standard MIG lead. So today we were running my Everlast 253 DPI. Now it comes with a Teflon liner because most people buying that machine are looking to single or dual pulse aluminum MIG. If your machine didn't come with a Teflon liner and you're trying to MIG weld aluminum, instead of spending three to $600 on a spool gun or 12 to $1,300 on a push-pull gun, if you've got a little bit of aluminum that you need to MIG, sometimes just spending $16 on a Teflon liner and an oversized tip will get you by. I'm Jesse McCollum, brand ambassador for Everlast Welders. Remember, weld mean, weld green.